We sold 2080 Crown Road, Queenscliff, and the crown jewel of Queenscliff. This is the sale of the tail, and I've got with me here Jessica Patterson. The tail of the sale. The tail of the sale. What did I say? The, the sale, sale of the, the tail. tail. <laughs> All righty, let's talk about this one. This is an interesting one. This wasn't your, this was... your, your standard A to B transaction yeah. story. It, it, it had its, its, bumps had its ups and downs. Definitely. Let's, yeah. let's elaborate on it. Let, let's talk about the essentially who, who were the vendors behind all of this so we had a lovely family that were our vendors they were a turkish family the actual people that were living in the property um were the grand grandparents there was grandchildren as well he actually told me he had 29 grandchildren and was one of nine so there was hundreds and hundreds wow. yeah wow um big family so the plan was they wanted to sell because they were wanting to go back to turkey um the vendor's dad is 104 years old so he wanted to go back and spend some time with him there's going to be a lot of wows coming from my mouth yeah this one, just <laughs> yeah dad still alive oh, what you told me as well that walks to work six kilometers to and from yeah. every day 104 and he works in a mine. So he's doing like manual labor every day. He walks six k's to work, six k's home and has an ice bath every day. That's, 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 uh, is that what, that's what we want to be. I'm not doing that though. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to be honest with ourselves. Yeah, here. no. Now let's talk a little bit about Queenscliff, the suburb in general. And, and, and you know, as far as the market's concerned in, in, in that realm, I think it was safe to say, you know, up throughout this campaign, you know, there was kind of a little bit of an ice cap over Queenscliff. There was not a lot of properties. Not much trade. Not much trade. Not a yeah. lot of properties being transacted. And with those that were, for example, agents weren't necessarily disclosing the prices. So we're kind of working against the elements here and having to really um, work with market feedback, uh, work with our vendors and, and really gauge as to what angle we're going in with the guide price and where yeah. we're ultimately going to end up because it was obviously set expectations from the start. Um, and then obviously throughout, it, it's, it obviously started to shift and change and we had to really work with that. Yeah, I was actually speaking to the vendor a couple of days ago um, and he was showing me a property that had sold down the road for 1.71 million, which was very similar to this one. And we sold it for 1.2 million. And I had to show him um, kind of a graph of how the market has changed. And that 1.7 was market value for then that 1.2 is market value for now yeah. um and it's just change in market you sh the price expectation has to also change absolutely and it's also having these sorts of conversations with your vendors is what makes this uh the tail of the sale you know not again not your your, your kind of typical perfect scenario whereby everybody's happy and we get yeah. the deal done you know you, you've got to have these um really upfront realistic conversations and you know you sometimes don't want to have them but they're uncomfortable they're really <laughs> uncomfortable and i think this this market you know for one proves more so than anything the type of agent that you are that's yeah. what agent you're going to become and mold into because you, you go through these kind of you know awkward experiences and conversations that really make you stronger on, on the other end sure. let's um I, I really want to just dive deep into this property because all in all, this was a beautiful, beautiful Stunning. apartment and a quite a big apartment for a two bedroom yeah. um, in the Queenscliff area. Um, I'll let you elaborate at the starters. What I loved, my favorite thing about this apartment is that, so it was quite a big unit block, um, but this apartment was separate from the rest of the apartments. It had no common wall and the only wall that accessed kind of like the whole rest of the units was direct into the garage. So it was kind of like a house attached to a unit block, if that makes sense. And it was huge as well. Every room was ultra sized, which was really um, unique for Queenscliff. And I can understand again why they wanted that high price point because something like this is a quality apartment. And I think one of the, the other unique elements about it was having that really cool European style outdoor terrace. Yeah. Um, and you know, might, might not have had the, the best, um, Aspect. aspect as such then it's just like yeah. struggling there but it might not have been the strongest aspect as far as you know getting a lot of light in but i think what's really nice about the, the apartment was that you had windows in almost every angle kind of like a 
almost like a panoramic view. Um, but then in the distance, I think this was one of the major highlights was having that um, that garden, yeah, the fresh garden, the community garden that everyone you know utilizes in that area. Um, plants, um, a lot of their veggies, for example, herbs. Um, you know, again, it's it's one of those places that brings community together. For sure, that was one of the major highlights of this place, I think. Definitely, and on that aspect, I actually had. Um, the best buyer come in. Uh, there was a few people commenting because the balcony faced south, but like we said, there was no common wall. So there was windows on either side. So you're actually also getting east and west aspect. And someone asked about the aspect and we were explaining that and she goes, you know what? A house has four sides. You get four aspects. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually really true for this property because there was windows on the uh, multiple sides. Um, so it was a great apartment overall. Now let's talk about the... Um the awesome buyers that we had at play, or yeah. for example, the buyers that ended up uh, taking this property off the market. Let's let's elaborate on those guys. I mean, yeah. they they were, they, um, they were the ones that actually had an amended contract leading up prior to, to option. Prior to option. So we actually had we had a few offer makers um, that came in. There was one offer maker who it was on the condition of the sale of their property, which may meant that they couldn't really jump. We had another offer maker that wasn't going to match the price expectation that the vendor wanted. And then this offer maker actually was prepared at auction, but didn't want to match that price point again. So they had amended the contract before auction. Both of us can see the emails the night before. We're thinking, brilliant. We've got, it was actually two people that had contracts amended. So we thought, brilliant. Get to auction day. Neither of them show up. Uh, and that was a that was a bummer. I mean, incredible turnout. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There was there was a lot of local, um, yeah, and outside of local area support coming in, wanting to chime in on the action. But I think there was, um, you know, a lot of people being quite skeptical at driving the prices up themselves, as yeah. opposed to kind of just seeing the process through. I mean, we definitely had our vendors fairly motivated to see the auction go through as planned, um, and in, in a, in a point where auction um, clearances were at a slot very decline. low. It's yeah. not auctions aren't happening very successfully at the moment like people are still running auctions but the majority of them are being passed in which yeah. means that the vendor has the right to have a bid which is kind of their bottom line and they can't sell below that bottom line and people aren't matching that bottom line uh which is what happened at our auction at 2080 crown road but it's very common at the moment um it just is what it is yeah but in the end i mean you know having that passed on and then seeing the processes through tail of the sale then resulted in us actually achieving the result of course that our vendors were happy with and yeah. you've got you know a family moving in this is you know they've got i believe it's, it's is it three two kids two kids yeah two kids I almost felt like it was three kids <laughs> running around like crazy but you know two beautiful kids moving into this lovely apartment well, massive home i've got to say it's, yeah. it's, it's it's a big place situated in a you know lovely part of queenscliff so they're not too far away from accessing really really good points of that area yeah so it gives it also i think was a big lifestyle decision for them yeah. so obviously the northern beaches you pay a premium to live in especially queenscliff um manly is kind of next price point as well but freshy and queenscliff curl curl you pay a quite a high premium to live in those areas um and so this family they were actually deciding whether they take their money and they go and they buy, buy a house in the shire or they use it here and they buy an apartment they're two completely different lifestyles and two completely different locations. And they ended up opting for the Northern beaches purely because of that accessibility to everything. Um, and because it's Northern beaches, but you know, it is a big decision for a lot of people because there is choice in different areas of Sydney and you can use your money in different ways and get completely different property. Absolutely. It's definitely all about doing your homework, but yeah. at the same time, you know, as again, it wasn't your clean cut transaction from start to finish, nor was it one of those fairy tale, you know, meet the lovely property per se rather than prince yeah and, and, and you know it, it being the one but it definitely resulted in, in, in definitely a, a, a massive learning curve for you and i yeah um and with the vendors as well i think the way vendors learn to respect you more than anything is transparency um and being able to relay all the information for sure um as effectively as you can they respect you in the long run um and then you can come with them with the honest price point for the, the definitely time Perfect. I think that's everything for that one. Beautiful. Great to be closing that out. Great to be closing that out. And Lots of happy people. Happy campers. And yeah. now with a, with a whole new fresh database of, of other buyers that are out there looking for something, it's time to jump onto the next property, I think. Yep. Alrighty. Thanks for joining me, Jess. Thanks. Let me turn this off.